just to lighten things up a little bit, there is an old, um, <laughs> there's an old Indian phrase, what was Custer's last thought? <laughs> okay. Um, and I wrote that in yellow because what a lot of people don't know is that he ran, he turned tail and ran from the battle and was killed by women and children. So a lot of people don't know that. Um, when it comes, oh, also another, yes? People laugh. Yeah. Internet shorthand. It's internet shorthand, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my fault. Um, one thing that I, I do like to say is that when, whenever I do speak, I like interaction. So if you have a question, let me know. Like, put your hand up, let me know, because I know if I'm listening to a whole big speech, lots of times I forget the questions I have in my head. So feel free to ask questions when I'm speaking. Um, I have pictures here of uh, tar sands that I will hand out. Um, tar sands is not just happening in Canada and going all the way down. Well, that's the XL pipeline. But on my reservation, and basically on many reservations across North America, there have been uranium mines, uranium mining for years and years. I know on my reservation, it's been since the 1940s. Okay, there, and it hasn't stopped. There's, um, <coughs> there's a place called Camden, Arizona, which is on our reservation where they recently, and I'm talking about within the past year, took somebody from the uh, um, FDA, or not FDA, whatever, federal EPA, EPA came and um, took radiation readings. The radiation reading at, that, at the Camden mine for two days was higher than a radiation, a normal radiation reading on uh, an old site in over two years. And I'm sure you've all seen on the internet pictures of uh, babies from Fallujah who have been deformed. Okay, I've seen that all my life. I have delivered babies that had no eyes, no nose, that were severely deformed. And I was at a... Um, uh, a panel once in Manhattan where a lady stood up and said, oh, we, we can't have this with these babies being deformed, the soldiers are coming back from Fallujah. And I was just like, we've had that here in the United States for decades. What are you talking about? Uranium is like, and all this poisoning has been here. But you haven't seen it because you're not native. Because they don't do it any place but native lands. This is the stuff we've been fighting for for years. When, when I was younger, the Dineta was, uh, um, the Dineta is basically the four corners of um, southeastern uh, New Mexico, no, northeastern New Mexico, northwestern Arizona, southwestern Utah, and south, Eastern, Col I'm so bad with directions, Colorado, <laughs> those four corners. Um, that's what we call the Dineta. Those are our sacred lands between the four mountains. Um, and we could, it was so green. Um, those of you who have been, some of, some of you have been to, our, uh, to my house and have seen uh, beautiful paintings that my father did from when we were younger and everything is just green with snow-capped mountains, beautiful. You could be running along the reservation and streams were everywhere. Just bend down and drink this beautiful, pure, clear water. All of that is gone. There are only two water source sources in 
on the Navajo reservation right now. One is the Little Gila River, one is the Gila River, and the other is the Little Colorado River. Now, uh, two years ago, in 2011, Republican senators, Kyle and, um, why am I blanking? McCain, thank you, um, came to the reservation and just outright baldly stated, well, uh, we need the, the water from these rivers because Phoenix and LA and Vegas need power. Like, what are you talking about? Um, well, <coughs> we can get you guys water somehow, but we want you to relinquish the rights that you have to this river forever. And that's it, forever. The, our only water source. Now, where I was raised on Big Mountain, to get to the uh, Little Colorado River, it's 30 miles one way, 30 miles another way. You want to know how we get water? You drive, that, you drive that 30 miles. You load up five-gallon plastic containers of water that have to last these elders, especially, especially the elders, because they live in the more out-of-the-way places, has to last them for at least two days. It's what they wash with, what they drink with, what they cook with. They do everything with this five gallons of water and they have to travel 60 miles to get it. And they want to take that away from us? There will be nothing left. The Dineta already is no longer green. There's very, very small pockets of Greenland where, they have, where we still have some sheep. But I was there in the 70s when the Peabody Coal Company came and started bulldozing our land to mine for coal. And I remember my grandmother, Wainimi Bizahaloni and Roberta Black Goat, and a lot of a lot of other elders, who again they they came out, or should I say, to, to begin with, aside from now, they were using bodies as as blockades. I remember sitting down in front of bulldozers with all of my family and cousins and relations, but they went right over us, you know. <clears throat> we had to run or be bulldozed. And there were some people who wouldn't move. Um, my grandmother was a very proud woman. And I remember the, how bitterly she cried when she saw all of our crops being devastated, just completely destroyed. So my land has changed. My reservation has changed so much in the past 30 years. It's disgusting. Okay. And now they want to take away our only water source with uh, good old Bill SB 2109. And the, oh, go ahead, please. Resisting people didn't move, did they literally just yes. Kill those older people? Yes, people were killed. Also during that time, um, a lot of us became dispossessed. Uh, they decided that, um, does anyone know the, um, the whole, uh, the definition of blood quantum, and the whole thing behind that? Okay, basically blood quantum is an idea that was put forth by the US government of how much Indian are you? If both your parents were Indian, you're full blood. If one of your parents were Indian, you're half blood. If a half blood child marries someone who is an Indian, they're no longer Indian. And even the half-blood Indians, like myself, my mother's Scottish, and I was born, raised in a Dineta. I speak, read, and write my language. I was trained as a medicine woman. But because my mother was Scottish, we weren't considered Indian enough to remain on our own land. So the BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs, go ahead. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to, uh, I knew a little bit about the topic you were saying. Yeah. 
Actually, and it, it's not even one sixteenth anymore. Right. It's one right. one quarter. If even, some, it depends on which reservation you go to, but if you're one quarter, you're not considered Indian enough. Half blood, yeah, you can still get, but I'm half blood, and they took away my tribal registration card. Okay, and th this was twofold. This was a way of thinning out the Indian population, and also. The four, in, in two years, 14,000 Navajo and Apache families were removed from the Dineta, okay? Uh, my family was one of those families. Um, then the BIA came over and said, oh, well, you know, there's not that many of you here left. You don't need this land, this part of the land anymore, so we'll just take back some of this reservation land. And this is what they did on reservations all around the country. And for many years, a lot of natives felt like no matter which way they turned, nothing was getting done. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of, a lot of people lost hope. Um, a lot had uh, succumbed to alcoholism or substance abuse. And then when the, um, Indian of all, the Indians of all tribes took over Alcatraz and AIM was born, all of a sudden it was like, okay, we've remembered our voices, we've regained our voices, we've remembered who we are, it's time to stand up and, and stand up for ourselves and help to try to find a way to right the wrongs. Uh, for a while in, um, in the 80s and early 90s, that kind of fell back a little bit. The thing that I think really revitalized all of the different organizations was Occupy. And since then, it's like we were always taught, um, speak quiet, the government and BIA always said, speak quietly, speak quietly, we'll listen. No, no one ever did listen. So when I first, um, began speaking with, uh, as a representative of uh, Native Resistance Network, I said the time to speak quietly has passed. It's time to stand up and shout. It's time to yell, to scream, to come to, you know, to, to become physical if need be. But the time for speaking quietly is gone. It is gone. Now, we have people who sympathize with us. But as I said before, we need accomplices. We need people who will stand with us. I'm not saying, you know, you know I'll go get a gun and let's, you know, start like shooting at people. No, when we have protests, when we have these events, we need people to come and support us. We need accomplices, you know, because this is not just affecting natives. They're destroying our world. This is affecting all of us. If you think it's not gonna trickle down to you, look at Boston, okay? Two men set off a bomb. Okay, was it the two, two uh, pressure cooker bombs? Yeah. In 9-11, was there martial law? No, but there was in Boston for two pressure cooker bombs. Uh, bombs. Now, what does that tell you? That tell you that maybe the government's trying to figure out, well, let's see what kind of resistance we get, and if this goes through kind of smoothly, well, then we can just spread that out. Are you willing to lose all your rights? Are you willing to live in a country that will be under martial law into an Orwellian society? No. It's time, it's time to stand up. It's time to speak. It's time to speak out. And even for our, for our world, if you all can pass these down, this is tar sands one year's, one year's difference. Um, can you get these out here? If you can pass these back, this is one year's difference from the start until it was a year later. You can see the complete and total devastation. Is this what you want? Does anybody here want this? Then it's time to actually start doing things. Where is this? 
That was taken actually in Canada, but I have other pictures on our website. Uh, I think, was it Alberta? Alberta. And, uh, but there are other pictures on the NRN website that show some of the stuff that's uh, been happening in the northern United States now.